I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. Tom's going to kick things off this evening and introduce our guest. Tom? Yes, uh, we've got Jennifer with us tonight, and Jennifer's from Arkansas, and she's had an experience uh, with this creature. Um, also known as the uh, uh, the Boggy Creek Monster or the uh, Falk Monster. But Jennifer, I'm going to hand it off to you and uh, just let you take it from there. Okay, I appreciate you guys asking me to do this. Um, I Just a little bit about myself. I've always been interested in animals. Uh, I've been raising baby animals with the help of my parents since the time I was about seven. Um I was a wildlife rehabilitator for the state of Arkansas. I was actually grandfathered into their program uh, because of my in-depth history with with raising animals and getting them released back into the wild. Uh, And I did that up until a year or so ago. Um, I work um, as a communications um, officer with a, a local sheriff's department. Um, and I have had about 15 years um, experience working with several veterinarian clinics in our area. So animals are kind of my forte. Um, you know, it's something that I just kind of uh, seem to excel with. Uh, but in 2009, I saw something that just defied anything I've ever seen in a book, anything I've ever seen walk into a clinic. Um, just, it was just, uh, phenomenal. Uh, and it's been something that has, um, I, and I hate to use the word disturbed, but bothered me even to this day because I can't define what it was going back, you know, in my history, um, you know, what kind of animal this could have been, what kind of whatever it was, um, you know, and then there's parts of me that want to go back and say, I wish I'd never seen this because now my curiosity is, is there, you know, what was this thing? But um, I started, you know, kind of spending time reading a little bit and, and talking to different people. And I I realized that I'm not the only one that has seen or had an encounter with anything like this. Um, My first recollections of of the Falk monster, as it's called, come from when I was a child. You know, and I'm I'm close to half a century old now. Uh, So this was many years ago. Yeah, I remember being told about this thing. And um Actually, one of my cousins had an encounter with it in the 1980s, uh, not far from where I actually saw it. Uh, and his encounter, he'll cry when he's when he's talking about it because it's still absolutely that scary to him. Um, the day that I saw it, I had actually been uh, in an area where there were several alligators. Uh, I'd been trying to throw a rope around one because I just wanted to catch one. Uh, and decided to move back to a different area. And as I was driving down into this area, and just a little bit about my surroundings, there's probably not a house within four to five miles of where I was. Um, there were there was a, uh, a gun range close by, but there was nobody there that day. And I was just driving through there, just kind of, you know, I, I drive real slow because I like to, to look for animals that might, you know, deer or something that might be crossing the road and, and try to take a picture of. And I had this, and, and it really only took just a matter of a few seconds. This thing that was probably eight foot tall ran out in front of me. And I remember it just, it come out of the woods with a step crossed the road with two steps and then was across and into the woods with that fourth step. And I just sat there shaking my head, you know, just wondering 
what in the world did I just see? Had somebody spiked my drink? You know, just all kinds of things going through my head. And had sat there probably anywhere 15, 20 seconds or so. And then I just, I heard this gosh, awful scream. I'll just, that's something I'll never get out of my mind. Um, and that's when I did a little three point turn in the road. And, and I, I got back to my house that I was living in at the time with my cousins and didn't go back to that area for quite some time. And I, and I still hesitate to go into that area now unless I have somebody with me. Um, and as I was telling Tom uh, yesterday uh, when we spoke, uh, whatever I saw, I, I know that I know that I know it was a juvenile. Uh, and, and this just comes from years of working with baby animals, young animals, you know, and even adult animals at times that this just had a juvenile appearance, juvenile characteristics, even though that glimpse was just so brief. Um, I don't know, you know, what it was that screamed. Was it this animal? Was it his mother? You know, was it a, a, a father or older sibling? I, I don't know. Um, I met some people that have have dealt with this, um, the study of this foul monster for, for many years. Um, and they, you know, people have been seeing this thing for as early as, you know, some of the old Indian records, you know, the Indian records even, even have different drawings on, on bluffs and things of, of this tall bipedal, long haired, you know, blackish brown animal that is just, for for all else you know to it, it's just a bigfoot you know and that's that's the only thing that can that can describe you know what i've seen uh even though there's still a lot of questions out there so that was you know that's that's kind of my experience with it um it was like i said it was short-lived it's something that i i really don't want to ever see again although i would at some point like for my um um, questions about what it is to be answered, and I just I don't know that uh, those will come in my lifetime. You know, they they may. I hope by with this research and stuff that that a scientist somewhere can get a hold of this and say, hey, you know, this is what we've got, and it can be added to our our science books and our wildlife uh, photography books and and all of that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Now, just out of curiosity, have you been back to that area recently, or? Uh, I did not get to go this year. Uh, I did go last year. Again, when I go in that area, I make sure I have somebody with me. Uh, my windows are usually rolled up, <laughs> and yeah. I usually travel through that area pretty quick. It's not something that I just uh, dilly dally around with, because, like I said, I just I really don't want to see it again. Of course, of course. And, and, and hey, um, when, when you uh, talk to the sheriff's department, because you said that uh, you knew some people there, whatever, what was their reaction? Did they believe you or did they kind of have a skeptical reaction? It just it kind of depends on who you talk to, um, uh, especially in Arkansas. Um, what I have come to find over the last several years is that there are many people uh, who have seen something or have family members or close friends that have seen something. So there's actually a lot of people around that aren't that skeptical. Right. Um, and, and, and my encounter happened in 2009. So, I mean, you know, that was, that was 10 years ago in June. Uh, it was a long time ago, but yet that, that memory still flashes in my, my mind. Um, I've talked to people that have actually said we've got pictures of them on game cameras, you know, but they are uh, afraid to come forth, you know, because they're afraid of the, the publicity and maybe the negative publicity and, hey, we just want to leave these things alone. And uh, if they're leaving us alone, let's leave them alone. And and we don't want people laughing at us. You know, we don't want people calling us crazy and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, so they just they tend to want to stay quiet about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jennifer, um, can you uh, you don't have to imitate it, but can you give a like a kind of a description of what the scream was like 
when you heard it? Oh my gosh, it was something between a scream and just a holler. Um, it lasted um, maybe a second, second and a half maybe. And it was just, it was kind of deep seated, but it was um, still had a little bit of a squeal to it. And I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, I can't imitate it, but I'll never get that sound out of my head. Yeah, I've, I've actually heard that same sound uh, uh, recently, uh, just a few, well, this summer. Mm -hmm. I was out camping, so I, I think you know, and what, the, and the more I think back about it, I had been going to this area, and I, I'd be known to get up and leave, you know, early before it got good in daylight, uh, and to be sitting out in this area waiting for the alligators to start moving around. And would hear huge splashes in the water's edge. And and think, well, maybe that's a beaver or something like that. But there's there's no activity of beavers in this area that I was. Um, you know, you don't see the trees that have been chewed on or, or anything like that. And the more I think back about it, you know, I, I'm wondering if I was actually hearing one of these splash in the waters. Because well, these were huge splashes. You know, uh, th that's a great point because, you know, I live, I live in Florida and um, there have been uh, things that I've read about, about um, them maybe eating alligators even. I know it sounds ridiculous because we think of them eating deer and, and so forth, but it would not, you know, shock me if, if uh, they were to eat things in the water as well. Obviously fish, but I mean other things as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and the there, you know, there was other than the the alligators that you, we would see in this area, you know, every now and then driving into the area, you might see a deer, but there was, and, and I would see raccoons occasionally, but other than that, there was no wildlife to be seen in this area. Um, you know, you would have to actually drive, um, you know, a mile or so to maybe start seeing, seeing an occasional deer or a hog or something mm -hmm. like that. But there was just no <clears throat> other places in Arkansas, you know, you're just overrun with, with wild animals. And, and there was, uh, literally kind of a, a sparse population of wild animals in this area. Yeah. That, that was my, my, uh, my next question is that um, for those of us that have never been to Arkansas, like, can you describe the area, like the landscape and uh, the area that you were in when you maybe saw this? OK, part of it was um, a national uh, timber company land uh, that actually leased out land um, where they where they grow the pine trees and things like that, you know, in in order to harvest them. Uh, they would lease out part of this land to um, to hunting clubs. Uh, the area I was in uh, was along a slough. Uh, there was a road that had a pretty good sized lake on one side, had some backwater off in the other, and it um, would run down into a, a boat dock into a major river in the area. Okay. Uh, so you, you had water, uh, you had lowland swampy areas and, and woods, um, just kind of, kind of like you would see in a Florida swamp. So, mm -hmm. you know, down in Southern Arkansas, it's very swampy. So that's, that's kind of the area, right. but you know, I've also got friends that have seen, seen them, uh, are seeing things that they can't identify in the uh, uh, central to northern mountainous regions of Arkansas as well. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer, um, you mentioned hogs, so I'm assuming there's probably like feral hogs or wild hogs in, uh, in Arkansas and in your area. Oh, yes, we're overrun with feral hogs. Um, <laughs> and in fact, uh, in 2016, I ran into a, uh, a forestry officer uh, that had been on um, uh, land early one morning and was shooting feral hogs. Now, of course, in Arkansas, uh, a hog is the only thing that a person can shoot and actually leave it. Uh, you know, some states it's called wanton waste and, and you're not allowed to leave things. But in Arkansas, you're allowed to kill hogs and, and just go off and leave them. Uh, but he was actually dragging the hogs out to the road 
uh, and was going to haul them off. Now, I, I never thought to ask him where he was going to haul them to, but he was he was putting them in his truck and was going to haul them off. And he had shot five. He had already drug four out to the road, and, and he estimated that the, each hog weighed somewhere around 150 pounds apiece. Wow. Um, he walked back off into the woods to to get the fifth hog, um, and like I said, he just had these laid on the road, and he was in an area where there was a locked gate behind him. Uh, there was no way for other vehicles to be in that area, um, and was gone, you know, just over the span of about 15 or 20 minutes, and he returned, and something had taken off with two of the hogs. Um, he said there was blood spots um, going leading into the woods uh, that led him to become alarmed because he said it was like something had picked one up under each arm and had walked off into the woods. Uh, the blood spots were parallel with each other, about three feet apart, um, and like I said, just went off into the woods. Um, that led him to scratch his head and, like I said, be alarmed. And then just a little bit later on that morning, he said he actually saw something crouched uh, behind a tree watching him. Um, and, and he said it watched him for some time. And he just he got nervous enough at that point that he left. Uh, and like I said, this, you know, this is a, a federal officer that has admitted to somebody that, hey, I've seen something that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, that I, I really think was a Bigfoot and I think was responsible for, for carrying these hogs, literally 300 pounds of hogs, just carrying them off like they were nothing. Hey, well, let me ask you, what, what was their reaction when they heard that? Did they think that he was just making it up or did they think that he was uh, actually telling the truth or were they just kind of? Well, this was this was a one on one conversation with him. Uh, um, so there wasn't anybody else there. Uh, to this day, you know, I don't know that he's told a lot of other people that. Um, uh, he told me because we had been uh, talking about it. I, that was my real reason for the trip down to southern Arkansas that week that um, that I ran into him was to actually talk to some other people about this Falk monster. And uh, he volunteered this information. And like I said, this happened in 2016. Um, so there are still people that are, are seeing it and having encounters with it, um, you know, down in this area. Yeah. You know, well, one of the things that, that I was wondering too, because, you know, the Falk monster, uh, was in 1972, I think. And of course uh -huh. now today is it's 2019. So do you think that, uh, that this creature has merged with others and now has new offspring that could be there? You know, like I said, the one that I saw was definitely a juvenile, um, you know, and, and I would I would, you know, take an oath that it was not an adult just based on its appearance. So, right. you know, there there has to be babies coming along at some point and, and um, unless one. these things live to be three or four hundred years old, because, like I said, we have Native American uh, drawings and, and things that that depict these animals. You know, so and you go back to, to Native American thoughts and things like that. They didn't just draw things out of their imagination like we do. You know, they they drew things that they encountered on a day to day or, you know, they they actually encountered. They didn't just make stuff up. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really interested, too, in the alligator thing about uh, <laughs> how they might actually hunt them, too, because we've heard that before. But. It is kind of really interesting, I think. Uh huh. Yeah, Jennifer, do you, um, you know the because based on your experience, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday as well. You felt that it was a juvenile. Can you kind of describe why? Was it facial features? Was it, what, what was it about this thing that made you think juvenile? You know, Tom, I don't know that I can honestly answer that. Uh, and, and I, I know that's probably not the answer that you're looking for other than I have just dealt with baby animals, you know, I, I bottle raise animals, um, and, and things, animals just have a different look about them when they're young than they do when they're mature. Uh, you know, even people do, um, uh, things just change. You can look at a puppy or a dog, you know, and usually tell if it's under a year old just based on its appearance. 
my appearance, my my viewing of this thing was just a few seconds, but this thing did not have, you know, what you would think of as an adult. Uh, it just it just looked like a juvenile. Right. It and, just and didn't also have a mature. It just didn't have a mature look to it, you know. Yeah. And let me ask you, too, on, on this, it, it, it maybe have been more curious rather than predatory, if that makes sense. It had maybe more, more of a, a curious tone to it. I don't know. I, I don't know if, if the tone was maybe a parent saying you're too close. You know, that was that was the first thing that ran through my mind when I heard it, heard the scream. Mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, something saying, you know, you're too close to my kid. You better get away. Um, and, and that was kind of my first thoughts when I heard the the scream or the holler. Uh, and that's what made me hightail it out of there. You know, um, and we talked about a little bit yesterday. You thought that this thing was, uh, and, and again, I appreciate your, um, you know, your perspective on why you thought it was a juvenile because, like you said, you've got years and years of experience. I mean, this is what you've done for your livelihood for a lifetime is work uh -huh. with animals. So, um, you know, definitely lean towards your judgment on that. Um, how tall is this thing? We talked about that a little bit yesterday. It was pretty big, right? It was at least eight foot. Um, I know I was in a Dodge Ram pickup uh, quad cab. Uh, that it wasn't elevated, but it set up quite a bit, and and it was it was quite a bit taller than my vehicle. Um, it was probably um, across the road, maybe forty yards in front of me, so less than half the length of a football field. Um, you know, so it was it was relatively close, and yet I could tell it was. You know, it, it had to have been between seven and eight foot tall. And then when I went back into that area with someone that has been studying this falc monster for years and and I parked, you know, where I saw it and, and showed him how tall it was on the tree um, and, and the tape measurement come just, you know, a couple of inches under eight foot. So, you know, I felt pretty good with with judging how tall this thing was. Hey, Jeff, yeah, hey Jennifer, have you been to any other places where you have come across these creatures at all, or you can heard any, any stories? I have not, but the, like I said, over you know the the last couple of years, and especially you know an increase in that since 2016, have talked to people even even around the area where I live now that dealt with these things, you know, 30 and 40 years ago. Uh, exactly. I, I've got a friend that said there was actually a family of them that lived behind her house and they had been watching her brother and sisters play marbles out in their backyard. Um, and one night a marble come whizzing through the kitchen window and, so dad, being curious as to what's going on, goes over to the window and looks out, and there's two of them actually in the kid's marble pit trying to figure out what they were doing with the marbles uh, and becoming agitated because they couldn't make the marbles move, so they would just pick up the marbles and throw them at the house uh, and wound up sending several through the kitchen window. And, and these people moved out of the house the week that, that week. They were that petrified about what was going on. Wow! Wow! Have you uh, have you spoken with those people um, since then? That's pretty interesting. Uh, I have not. Uh, I, I did try to call last night, you know, maybe to see if I could get them uh, to talk, to, you know, with you as well. Uh, I have not gotten a, a return phone call from them, so you know that's you deal with that with a lot of people. And and again, I kept quiet from 2009 to almost 2015. You know, my, my close family uh, and, and a few of my close friends knew what I had seen, but I really didn't actively talk about it because uh, there is a stigma of, you know, you're just making things up or, you know, you're, you're, you're not right in the head and different things like that. So a lot of people feel like it's just easier to keep quiet until you actually deal with somebody that has dealt with them. And then, and then people are a little bit more willing to talk. Right. Well, hey, Jennifer, what, what was your opinion about these creatures before this this whole thing happened? I mean, growing up, did you really like in before your 2009, I would have argued with the stop sign 
I would have argued with the concrete wall. There is nothing out there. Uh, since then, yeah, there's something out there. You know, I, I can't tell you for sure. I'm as far as you know somebody saying this was a bear you know that was running upright and we've seen videos of bear moving around upright um they wouldn't have had legs this long this thing covered you know a 20 foot span with four steps let's let's see a grown man running cover 20 feet with four steps it just don't happen Right, right. Um, you know, and a bear, they're not going to cover that much ground. They're going to cover maybe two to three feet with each step, you know, even if they're moving around on their back legs. They're not going to run. Uh, they're not going to look, you know, almost like a human that's running. Uh, you know, and, and the day that I saw this thing, I, I was telling Tom last night, you know, the, the heat index that day was nearly 105 it was hot. There's no, it wasn't anybody dressed up. There's no houses out there. You know, there, there wasn't any way of knowing, you know, I could be dressed up all day and maybe a car will come by because there's just, you know, that particular day, I was the first vehicle that had gone down that road. And, and you could tell because of, of mud and, and being out in the woods, you know, there was, there was no fresh tracks through that mud. Um, so, you know, you don't just stay dressed up all day hoping somebody will come by to scare you. That's not what it was. And it was obvious, you know, to me that, that somebody wasn't just dressed up wanting to, to play a prank on somebody because you never, you know, you might go all day and nobody go down this road. Exactly. Did, now, did you did you ever hear anything from your neighbors about anything in your area? I mean, I, I don't know how close you were with your neighbors or anything, but did you ever hear anything in, in, about that area at all? No, I actually, I live in the city now. <laughs> I don't live out in the country. Um, you know, and, and uh, the neighbors we have, the the, the town that I grew up in, um, you know, I, I really haven't talked to anybody from that town that has seen anything. All of this is coming from people that, that live in different areas than I do. Okay. Uh, other than this one that I met through, I actually met her through the vet clinic that had the dealings with the ones that threw the marbles. Okay. Okay. You know, and Jennifer, I'm going to back up for a moment. Uh, and we talked about this yesterday, and that is, even if it was just, you know, playing devil's advocate here, even if it was somebody in a suit, nobody in a suit is going to give you that sense of dread and terror seeing a real creature and especially somebody with your background working with that right it, it was right not, yeah it just, well it, and tom we can just you know we can go back to to what i said before you know the heat index is nearly 105 um this road you know there's some days on this road that i was on that nobody would go down there's no houses down there it doesn't go to anywhere except a slough a grown-up slough so there would be, you know, like I said, sometimes days where there was no vehicular traffic down this road whatsoever. So you don't just go out there and dress up in a costume and run around in the woods with 105 degrees hoping somebody will come by. You know, um, that just the, the probabilities of that are, to me, uh, greater than the probabilities of actually seeing what I saw. <laughs> yeah, well put. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's very well put. And also the, and then it was you had the scream right after that. So that was, and that wasn't the creature screaming. You actually thought that was uh, its parent or some other creature. Given I really did. I, I really did. Um, and like I said, you know, we can we can drive down the road now and I can hear birds and I can hear different animals. And and I can tell my, you know, I, my friends just uh, sometimes marvel at my ability to hear things. But I can go, do you just hear that deer snort at us when we drove by? And, you know, we'll back up and, and start looking and we'll see the deer standing right there in the woods. Um um, you know, so I, 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 I know what animals sound like, and this is nothing like I've ever heard before. You know, uh, I, I've had the uh, privilege of hearing a mountain lion scream. Um, you know, I've heard bobcats scream. I've, I've heard bears make their noises. And, and this is something that I have never heard before, even in a zoo. So, so wait, are you, are you saying that maybe this was the scream of a deer being attacked by one of these things? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. uh, I, I really feel like this was this animal or its parent hollering. 
Oh, uh, okay. I, I really do. Like maybe try to get I, attention to to its other members, basically. Either that, or it was a warning to me to to get out of the area. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, and and I really, you know, that was my gut feeling the the day that I heard it. That's that's still, you know, what I feel like. I still feel oh. like it was a warning for me to to get lost. Yeah. Now, what what time of the day was this? Was it at night or morning? No, this was probably two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Hey, Jennifer, what color was this thing? It was such a dark brown that some people might call it black. Uh, I would call it a blackish brown. Um, It was darker than dirty brown. Um, So just just almost black, uh, but with still some brownish features to it. Okay. Hey, Will, can can I ask you, does that... That kind of sounds like what a, the the right coloration for a juvenile, isn't it? Yeah, typically they're very dark black, and then they they can lighten up as they get older. But uh, oftentimes, now the two that I saw when I was sixteen were the color she's describing. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. And Jennifer, did you get the sense that there was more than one uh, when you saw them? You know, when I saw that one after I heard the scream, yes. Uh, after, after I heard that holler, I felt like there was more than one. And I know, you know, I don't know what kind of, uh, acreage, uh, that these things are supposed to traverse or anything like that. But I know the area where the hogs were carried off was probably 45 miles, uh, from where I saw it. Um, so, you know, the, the probabilities of it being the same, the same animal was probably different, mm-hmm. um, you know, or a little bit higher. I like I said, I just I, I don't have a clue what kind of of um, radius these things are supposed to have, but uh, there was you know considerable difference between where I saw it and where the the one had uh, walked off with the hogs. Right. Well, I Will, you, you could come out of that. I mean, difference, right? Yeah. It was about a seven years difference. You saw yours in 2009? Nine, yes. And Will, you could talk about the range. I mean, how how long of a range they have. Well, now they're going to be a little bit different in that part of the country um, because we have a slightly different variation there than what's out here on the West Coast. Um, So it really depends on, you know, food sources and things like that. Um, I was, I did want to mention though, uh, carrying off two hogs of that size, there's a parallel story. I, it just immediately came to mind, uh, a gentleman in Georgia, uh, I interviewed a few years back, uh, told me about a very similar situation that happened there. It actually wasn't in Georgia. It happened in North Carolina, I believe, but, um, uh, this creature had been terrorizing local livestock uh, killing quite a few actually, you know, for whatever reason. And there was one time there were two uh, hogs. And I think I want to say they were 150, 200 pounds each in the exact same kind of situation. Uh, they were gone. They found the footprints of this creature and it looked like they had just been picked up under one under each arm and it, it stepped over a fence and, and walked away with them. Wow. wow. I mean, heavy animals. Yeah, big, so it's big creature. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. not without precedent then. Yes, absolutely. I've heard this well that time, and and I'm, there's probably a couple other times very similar kinds of things have happened. Well, we, you know, we've got our own researcher Will that had a similar situation with uh, an elk. He saw an elk get killed and turned around, and by the time he went back, and he said it was just a matter of a few minutes. Um, something had picked it up and carried it off in the woods. Yeah. I mean, you could easily imagine that. Yeah, so uh, pretty interesting. And uh, did the, uh, I guess, so, so I'm a little bit curious, did the wildlife officer mention if he, because he saw the blood trail going off in the woods or off in, in some direction, did he follow it for a little bit or was the creature watching him at that same time? He followed it back uh, 
to where it started into the woods uh, from the road. Um, and, and our discussion, I believe that he he just kind of shook his head and and looked at that, you know, for for some time and then just left uh, because it was enough that it kind of made him nervous. Sure, sure. And when when did he see the um, see he saw a creature crouching? Was it- he did. It was a little bit later that day. It was just a few hours later. Um, close to the same area, you know, within a mile or two of the of where he was at uh, when the hogs disappeared. So uh, uh, just a couple hours later when he saw it crouching, and, and that's when he left that area for the day. He didn't return. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Will, um, quick question for Will. This, do you think these things have the ability to recognize a vehicle and maybe kind of just like – uh, not necessarily have it out for you, but keep an eye on that one s- specific vehicle if it recognizes it. Well, if it's hanging around the area, uh, certainly. I mean, just like, you know, people. And we look, see other primates are the same way. They can recognize specific people and objects and so forth. Well, and you see that with just about any kind of wildlife. You know, even the alligators. I had gotten to where I was going to this area just about every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the alligators would actually stay where I could see them, you know, and a different vehicle would come by and they would, uh, submerge and, and not come back up for some time. You know, we see that over and over in our, our park systems and our, our wildlife refuges that see, uh, numerous, uh, vehicles and cars, uh, when you're going to one area, uh, on a, on a repetitive basis and not necessarily day to day, but it, you know, at least once a week or so, mm-hmm. these animals become accustomed to that, you know, they, they come accustomed to your vehicle and they're not as apt to run. Um, and, and as can... if somebody comes through with another vehicle, they, they take off because they don't recognize it. I, I can tell you a story. Um, the dog that I grew up with, my, my colleague. Really? When station, yeah, when I was stationed at Fort Lewis, um, I would drive out to my parents' house pretty often. And my mom always told me she always knew when I was coming because the dog would start barking when he heard my pickup two or three mm-hmm. miles away. He knew the yeah. sound of my vehicle. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's amazing. But, um, but hey, hey, Jennifer, um, uh, like right now, where you're where you're at, are you are you still kind of uh, a little bit scared of these creatures that they might come out, or are you more? Do you think that you're more equipped to to uh, deal with them if uh, you know, and, and more I guess intelligent in in terms of uh, kind of shielding shielding them away, basically. I'm not scared of them. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be on a dirt road out in the middle of nowhere like I was in 2009 and come across another right. one. Right. That situation, yes, I might be scared of them. Scared of them coming after me where I'm at? No, uh, I, I'm not. Um, you know, I just, the, these things, um, you know, and I, and I know people have had scary situations with them, Um uh, but I don't. I, I think their ultimate goal is to stay out of human eyesight, human contact. Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think they're going to just come after people or whatever. Right. And if you're encroaching in their in their area, yeah, they might. But I, I don't think it's going to be a big uh, publicity thing. You know, it's going to be more of trying to keep their area calm and and human free. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, my own opinion, and I think that Will and uh, Tom would agree, is that they really don't want anything to do with humans. They want us out of there. Um, uh-huh. the, at the same time, I mean, it's inevitable that at some time as our population increases and their population increases, that there is going to be a sighting and there's going to be a body killed and there's going to be a clash and everything. But um until then, I mean, there's, there's still plenty of forest out there, so I think that that they'll continue to avoid us, but uh-huh. we'll see, I guess. <laughs> you know, that was a question I had, uh, Jennifer, was conflict um, between humans and these things, and obviously I think it has happened. Have you heard of any stories uh, in your area, or, or have you heard of any stories at all, say, 
for example, in Arkansas or elsewhere, where there has been some sort of conflict or even attack um, by these creatures. This kind of goes back to that movie. Um, I haven't seen the movie in its entirety. I've just seen bits and pieces of it, but my understanding was there was some hey, hey, in there where it did have uh, hey, there was some conflict. Hey, Tom, by the way, I'll, I'll give you a link to that. I, I actually have it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. So, so I'll send you that. You know, I, I've, I've not seen the movie either. You know, I, I don't know. I don't discount. I don't, you know, after seeing what I saw, I don't discount what people say. Uh, I'm, I'm not as quick to do that as I was prior to 2009. Um, you know, and, and evidently these people have been petrified of this, you know, but uh, hearing about people having conflicts with them now, no. Uh, I, I still hear from time to time of people that have seen something, uh, catch something on a game cam or something like that, but just um, uh, personal, you know, human versus Bigfoot conflicts, I, I've not heard of any. Uh, not, not you know, since that movie. Um, and, and like I said, I've, I've never seen the movie. Uh, I've just seen, you know, a couple of clips here and there of it, like, like you, Tom, but, um, you know, I, I, I've not heard of any that have just, you know, have said, you know, that it's been after them or, or anything like that. And, you know, in, in that original one, there really wasn't much of that anyway. There was one situation where, um, and we actually have somebody who, knows that person who was uh, sort of mauled by one of them or by the creature that in that particular area at the time so but you know typically throughout that film there uh, the encounters people had weren't um, I guess for lack of a better term relatively benign in other words they were similar to your account where people would see things um, and they were frightened by the encounter but it really didn't do anything uh-huh so it's it's well worth watching, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, 1972. Yeah. It's a little bit cheesy, but um, I, I think it was pretty well done. You uh-huh. know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of a lot of uh, you know Bigfoot related films, but I kind of like that one. You know, there was an air of uh, of um, uh, I'm trying to think authenticity. Of well, authenticity certainly, uh, seriousness about it. There was an air yeah. of seriousness about it. It wasn't approached from any silly angle. It was sort of, we're pre- this is the way it's presenting, you know, the folks that were living in the area and things they were seeing and so forth. But, uh, and then, of yeah. course, you know, the originals in the subject, uh, John Green and Renee DeHinden, both told me uh, in the mid-'70s that they went there and they felt that the events that happened in that area were legitimate. So, right. um, you know, coming from those two, I felt that was... Uh, definitely worth taking a look at. Yeah. But, well, but, and if you can, if you can actually, you know, find find the the officer, there have actually been local sheriff department officials, um, even in the last two years, that have seen this thing uh, or seen something in this area. Uh, you know, finding one of those that will open up and talk to you about it. You know, I, I'm, one of them came out in a local newspaper a year or so ago that they had actually seen it. Uh, you know, I, I hope that as more uh, officers and, and departments in the state of Arkansas install dash cams, um, you know, that maybe, you know, maybe we'll start seeing more of these pop up on dash cams and things like that. Yeah, it could be. I, we'd, I, we'd love to talk to some of the officers there, and, and of course, we guarantee anonymity uh, because mm-hmm. I, uh, um, I uh, have a close connection with someone who's a retired deputy sheriff. So, um, <laughs> you know, I totally understand, um, you know, concerns, you know, for career wise. I mean, it's a kind of a career killer if you're going to go out and talk about uh, a subject like this or just, you know, causing whatever you know, issues, you know, with your, your coworkers, but, um, you know, I believe there's more and more people that have seen stuff, uh, that we have less and less skeptics. Uh, you, you still have skeptics out there, you know, and no matter what you do, what you see, what you say, there's always going to be somebody that's skeptical. 
Um, but I believe that there are, are now enough people that are unafraid of speaking up, um, unafraid of people laughing at them, that there's, there's more and more people coming forth with, hey, I've seen something. Yeah, I think it's easier for people to talk about it nowadays. Skepticism is a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I encourage it. I, I'm a very skeptical person myself. Um, you know, on one side of the coin, we have people who believe anything. The other side won't believe anything. But there's a large uh-huh. section of people in the middle who are kind of on the fence. And, you know, if if you're willing to, you know, provide some kind of details or, or proof, you know, they're willing to listen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's probably the majority of the people out there that once they get some new information and the information is from uh, credible sources, then that's going to swing them over towards, you know, believing those credible sources. And like you said, there are those who are just, for whatever reason, they've got their heels dug in, they're entrenched, and they will not consider new information. They're just kind of a closed channel, closed minded person. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's the majority of the people, the majority of the skeptics. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always I always tell my students just to be as skeptical as you possibly can. And then only then, if you see the evidence, then, you know, change your mind. But it's always. Well, important. and, you know, I, I asked I asked a guy one time, you know, how come we've never seen any remains? How come we don't see any bones? How come we don't see this? And, and and he just point blank asked me, he said, you hunt. He said, have you ever come across a dead bear in the woods? And I was like, uh, no, you know, and, and how many people actually come across dead bear in the woods? Uh, most people don't. Uh, I know very, and I don't know anybody personally that has come across a bear in the woods, even though we have a large number of bears in the state of Arkansas now. Uh, we didn't used to, but we do now. But uh, uh, unless they were killed by, you know, a, a hunter's weapon of some kind, you don't come across one just laying dead in the woods. Yeah, something that's uh, like natural causes. Um, you know, and I think that argument holds true here in the Northwest as well, that I think in the state of Oregon, which is where I'm at, uh, I think the Department of Fish and Wildlife has um, estimated there's about 35,000, sounds like a large number, but 35,000 bears, and uh, nobody's found one that's died of natural causes, and I don't know what the estimated population of these things is, but... Uh, you know, that, that's a good, that's a very reasonable explanation of why they mm-hmm. have. And, and Jennifer, if, if I may ask, uh, what do you think? Do you think that these things eat bears as well? Um, if you Sir, had I don't have, I don't have a clue. Uh, I, I honestly don't. You know, like I said, the more I can think back and, and think of those loud splashings, um, and, and think that, you know, I don't remember seeing much wildlife in this area other than, you know, seeing the alligators uh, and an occasional raccoon. Um, you know, I don't know what they eat. Um, that they obviously like hogs because he carried two of them off. Yeah. Um, or it carried two of them off, you know, or, you know, I just, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't have a clue. Do they push trees over and, and eat leaves out of the top of the trees? You know, like yeah. like it's, some it's people all, try to say they do. You know, I, I don't have a clue. Yeah, it's it's all it's all a mystery, I guess. But hey, I think I uh, I think well, uh, we we definitely thank you for coming on and and uh, Will, do you have anything else to to wrap up with or? Um, you know, I but, don't at the moment, but um, except well. Uh, we are planning on having a special guest on with a connection to that area, so uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna yeah. leave. We'll leave that quiet. We're not gonna say who just yet. <laughs> we'll leave that a surprise. <laughs> well, guys, we, thank he, you very but, much for asking yeah. me. Uh, well, I, I appreciate the, the opportunity to voice and, and answer questions, and I, I wish you guys well. well. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Bye bye. All right, fellows, we'll listen. Um, Stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned for the Q&A segment, everyone. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. 
If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there. <laughs>